Good morning, Wabash. Speaking today at Pioneer Chapel will be Liam Thompson, David Marsh, Casey Crozier, Dane Smith, Seth Burrish, and Coach Don Morell for the annual tradition of Monon Bell Chapel. Please join me in giving our speakers a warm welcome. Good morning, Wabash. <clears throat> I first want to thank my teammates for voting me as one of your captains this year. I understand how big of an honor it is to represent you and all our program, and I really appreciate the opportunity to do so. I also want to thank the Sphinx Club for allowing us to speak today and for all they do for our great college. I also want to thank my family and everyone who convinced me that Wabash is where I should spend not only my college playing career, but to be a part of such a wonderful community as well. My first Wabash experience is one I'll never forget. During the fall of my senior year, one of my teammates and best friends from high school convinced me to come with him to watch his older brother play in Wabash's biggest game of the year, the Monon Bell game. Coming in, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I was shocked at how many people were at the game and how electric the atmosphere was. When I left campus that day, I felt like I had a pretty good hold on what Wabash was all about. As it turns out, I had no idea. In my first season at Wabash, I learned what Wabash football is all about. It's about brotherhood, sacrifice, and excellence. When we lost the bell my freshman year, I had no idea how devastating it would be for the team and how important the game really is to our school. It's been two years since the bell has been at its rightful place above the Allen Center doors. And in the meantime, we as a team have learned a lot about ourselves. Our coaches talk a lot about a football season being a lot like a book. Every week is its own chapter, but this book starts long before our first game this year at Rose Holman. This story starts last fall when our senior class was robbed of their senior season and had a chance of getting the bell back. It started last spring when we aimed to build trust through commitment, sacrifice, and most importantly, loving one another. This season has been a roller coaster to say the least, from starting 5-0 and and beating Denison in overtime to losing three out of the last four games in heartbreaking fashion. It's easy to trust and love each other when everything is going great, but it's harder to come in on a Sunday after some hard losses when many of your big goals as a team are out of your control. You're faced with a decision as a team. Should we pack it up and just get through the rest of the season or should we figure it out? But at Wabash, there's really no decision to be made at all. Wabash always fights. There's an expectation of excellence and we owe it to our teammates, coaches, students, and everyone who supports this amazing place to fight and get the bell back. But when we take the field on Saturday, I don't just want to win so that we can finish the season in the win column. I want to win because I love my brothers and I'm taking the field with. I love our coaches and managers and training staff. I love our fans who support us home or away every weekend, no matter our record. I love Jake Page and Nico Morris and all the seniors last year who didn't get to play in their last spell game. I love my actual brother who I've been throwing the ball to in the backyard since I could pick up a football who I get to share this awesome team with. We're going to win the game Saturday and get the bell back Saturday because we love Wabash. And in the wise words of Jake Slager, Saturday is going to be a long, restless night in Crawfordsville. Not because we don't have the bell, but because it's pretty hard to sleep when all you hear is ding, ding. Thank you. Good morning, Wabash. That's pretty cool. First off, uh, I would like to thank all of you for coming out to this year's Monon Bell Chapel Talk. I know we as players and coaches appreciate the full support that everyone gives to the football team each year. When I was chosen as a captain this year, the first thought that came to my mind was, what the hell am I going to say at the Monon Bell Chapel Talk? I know a lot of people here today thought I would be up here hooting and hollering, banging the table, screaming, kill the paw. <laughs> a few people even asked me if I would set the record for most F-bombs dropped in a chapel talk. <laughs> While that does seem very typical to my nature, I will keep it as clean as possible. Fingers crossed, coach. As many of you know, 
I have not always been a Wabash man. In the summer between my sophomore and junior year of college, I transferred from Miami University in Ohio, a public school with a student body of 19,000 male and female students, to Wabash College, a private school in the middle of Indiana with 900 or so strictly male students. You may be asking yourself, what in the world drove me to come to Wabash? And for a while, I kept asking myself the same thing. What made me want to come to Wabash? What is it that makes this place so much more special than any other college? The answer is simple. It's all of you. The students who dedicate themselves to the strict academics we place here at Wabash, all the while maintaining a balanced life filled with athletics and out-of-school activities. The faculty and administration, who spend their entire careers providing Wabash men with the tools needed to succeed in the working world. The families, who give their undoubted support to each and every one of us day in and day out. The coaches, who help guide us and each and every single player to reach their full potential, both in sports and in life. And the alumni, who even after graduation, give back to Wabash in more ways than one, creating a loyalty that lasts a lifetime. Many people outside of this campus do not understand what we go through here on a day-to-day -day basis. The amount of effort we put in as a Wabash community is like no other. Over the past few years, we have faced adversity. Whether it be losing the bell in 2019 or a worldwide pandemic ravaging the country in 2020 to now, the world seems to always want to knock us on our backs. But what I know is this. No matter how many times we get knocked down, we always get back up on our feet. No matter how many times we feel like we want to give up, we keep on pushing. No matter what, Wabash always fights. There is a quote from a speech given by Theodore Roosevelt titled, The Man in the Arena, in which he says, it is not the critic who counts, nor the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again, because there's no effort without error and shortcoming, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly, so that in his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Seeing as this is our, the first bell game in two years, I know the stakes are high. Bullets will be flying, and the team who wants it the most will come out on top. So I hope the new and improved 8-1 Dannys are ready for a battle like they've never seen before. Because I know the Little Giants are bringing their all this Saturday. Get ready to be 8-2. Ding, ding. Thank you. Good morning, Wabash. Good morning. That sounds nice. Um, first, I'd like, to I'd like to thank my teammates uh, and coaches for allowing me to be here and, and uh, molding me into the man I am today. I'd like to thank my, th my family um, for being there with me every step of the way, and my roommate, Luke Adams, for reading this over at 11 p.m. last night before we went to bed. Um, as we all know, the expectation for anything at Wabash is extremely high. Whether that's academics, athletics, or relationships, we strive to be the best. Going into our season, our expectations were to be 10-0, to be conference champs, and to bring the bell back and to win a national championship. Many people would shy away from expectations like these, but here at Wabash, we don't. Obviously, we didn't meet all these expectations, so that leaves the question, what happens when they aren't met? And I think that's a question I've had asked myself a little too many times here at Wabash. Um, but this is the time when the true character of a man is shown. In times of success, it's easy to be a good teammate, friend, and brother. In times of adversity is when his character is revealed. When things are stacked against you, how do you respond? Throughout this season, we have endured our fair share of adversity, but never have we shied away from it. We strapped our helmets up a little bit tighter, and we got back to work. I believe this is truly one of the greatest things that is taught here at Wabash. 
There isn't a class about it, nor is there a blueprint for it. It's something learned along the way, and it's what makes the men of this college truly outstanding. As I mentioned earlier, our goals were to go into the playoffs 10-0. and We are now heading into the bowl game with three losses on our record. We are playing a team Saturday that has, that has achieved most of what we planned on doing. The odds are stacked against us, and it would be pretty easy to convince ourselves that, hey, at the end of the day, it's just a football game. It's not a big deal or anything to give us comfort, but we aren't. That's not Wabash. Wabash is looking adversity dead in the eye and saying, bring it on. We are prepared for a dogfight Saturday, and you all should be too. There will be times when things don't go our way or it may look bleak, but never lose hope. Wabash always fights as something that this team and this college truly live by. We've seen what losing the bell does this campus. It strikes us in the heart. To our opponents, it's simply a big piece of metal, but to us, it's much, much more. It's tradition. It's about the men who have come before and the men who will come after. It's about setting a precedent of being winners here at this college. I promise to all in this room and to all men that come and watch Saturday, we will bring tenacity and ferocity like never seen before. We will play the game the Wabash way, the way it should be played. I'd like to end with a quote from a video shown to our team when we arrived at summer camp that I think accurately captures our season and the attitude of this college as well. Here's what you should know about winning before you chase it. Winning is not loyal to you. It doesn't care about you. It doesn't care how sore you are. Winning doesn't care how much sleep you get. Winning doesn't care how hard you work at times. Sometimes a guy does not work you and he still wins. Winning requires all of you and then some and it promises you nothing. It's a mastermind at creating fear and doubt in your head. It causes setback after setback. So the question is about winning. Are you willing to sprint when the distance is unknown? And why chase this thing called winning? Because the only thing that is guaranteed in life if you don't chase winning is losing. Gentlemen, they've got something of ours, and Saturday we're taking it back. Ding, ding. Good morning, Wabash. I'd like to begin today by administering a few thank yous. First, the Sphinx Club, uh, all of you guys, thank you for the support and uh, everything that you guys have done for me and provided me in my time here at Wabash. Thank you to my brothers in Beta, uh, my roommate Riley Woodward, uh, for reading this over last night, similar to Croge, um, and Sampa Paris for allowing me to use your socks for today's chapel talk. Thanks, man. <laughs> All right, first, thank you to my coaches uh, for everything you've done for me um, and for shaping me and molding me into the football player and gentleman I am today. Special thank you to Coach Olmi Olmstead. Um, you know, you've really taught me the importance of eating crust on my peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Thought it wasn't, that's right. <laughs> Second, uh, and most really importantly too, thank you to my teammates, my fellow offensive linemen for believing and trusting in me uh, to lead our program day in and day out. Lastly, thank you to my parents, Tim Leander Smith, uh, my grandfather, Mike Jerry, and my sister, Peyton, uh, for always supporting me in everything that I do. Now, why we're all gathered here today. It's Bell Week, a time for all little giants to come together and fight for one common goal, to win. To win is the important part there. As a senior captain, I think it's best to utilize my time in front of you all today to demonstrate exactly how we are going to accomplish that goal and why it is that Wabash will be victorious this coming Saturday. First, we're going to win by believing. Believing in the power of Wabash and the power of being united as one. Our college has endured very challenging times within the last two years. Yet we're standing here today by courage and strength. Second, we're going to win by being relentless and not settling for complacency. Our football team has gone through a lot this season, and there have been plenty of challenges along the way. However, one thing still remains at the forefront of our minds, fighting to regain the center point of our campus, the bell. I vividly remember in 2019 trotting off the field after kicking a go-ahead field goal and thinking to myself, you've done enough to win. Your team has done enough to win. The thoughts of complacency and satisfaction of being ahead three points and doing enough to win is not the Wabash way. And each and every one of you know that. In hindsight, those thoughts of mine were juvenile, as I had not yet experienced the true meaning of a bell game. 
and I had not fully embraced the characteristics of a true Wabash man. See, a Wabash man does not allow thoughts similar to mine of my past to enter within his mindset. And this coming Saturday, rest assured that our mindset will be focused on only representing Wabash and beating DePaul. Lastly, we're going to win by being different than our opponent. They will mimic us, taunt us, and probably yell some pretty incredible things. Yet deep down, they, do, they know that they do not have what it takes to attend Wabash College and be a little giant. They definitely don't understand the adversity and everyday struggles that our college presents. They do not hold themselves to a different, they do not hold themselves to the same standard as we do ourselves, and we also want it more than they do. <clears throat> Fellow students, I want to leave you all with a challenge. This Saturday, I challenge you to wake up, brew a pot of coffee, pack a sack lunch, and grab your hard hat, because it's going to be a long day in Crawfordsville. Ding, ding. <laughs>
Good morning, Wabash. First of all, I'd like to say happy Veterans Day. I thought that musical tribute was fantastic. And uh, and we remember that all gave some and some gave all. So you need to think about Veterans Day. I want to say thank you to the Sphinx Club and everything you guys do on this campus. I'd like my coaches, if they could stand up quickly. There we go. That's a collection of fine men, great coaches, uh, even more important, great fathers and great husbands. Um, I have a special thank you, and I don't know if she's here. Is Michelle Jansen here by any chance? Okay, so that's fine. Hey, uh, every staff, faculty, send her a note, let her know that I talked about her in uh, <laughs> chapel speech. Uh, Michelle Jansen worked tirelessly on raising the money for our beautiful little giant stadium, and I would be completely remiss if I did not mention her and thank her for all her efforts. <laughs> And my biggest thank you of the day uh, goes to every student in this chapel. You've endured a year and a half of extraordinary times, which have not always been pleasant, uh, brought to our campus by the pandemic. And now we find ourselves on the verge of normalcy with one of the greatest traditions Wabash has to offer, the Monon Bell football game. I'd like to... Uh, well, I'll digress real quick. I'm going to tell a little story. And if Nick Hammond's here, let him know this is kind of a joke. So don't take it serious. But there's, there's Nick. OK, so Nick, there's, there's a story where God gets a phone call from the devil. And the devil says, hey, we want to play you guys in a basketball game. And God says, well, wait a minute. We've got the greatest team on earth. Uh, Bill Sharman, the legendary Laker coach, is our coach. Uh, we picked up Kobe Bryant is in heaven. He's playing for us now. We are really, really good. And the devil says, well, uh, you got to remember, we've got the officials. <laughs> so we're going to battle those guys Saturday, too, uh, as we get now. Now, Nick, that was a joke. It didn't really happen, okay? Just to make sure Nick's good. For, for those of you who, who uh, don't know me as well as my football team does, I do believe in magic. I really do. I believe in the magic of Christmas. I believe in uh, the magic of Disneyland. I believe in all things Harry Potter. There is magic there. I believe in the magic, and, and tell me if you agree, I, be, I believe in the magic of Chick-fil-A, yeah. okay? <laughs> so Chick-fil-A has so much magic, they close one day a week so their employees can have two days off. They lose about a billion dollars a year and they don't care because they believe in their magic. And, and if, if you ever talk to a Chick-fil-A employee, they will tell you there is magic uh, in that organization. And mostly, I believe in the magic of Wabash College. Do you guys believe in the magic of Wabash College? <laughs> I didn't go here, and there's no way I'm walking underneath that arch ever. I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm a better driver because I have a Wabash license plate on my car and I would never embarrass the college with my driving. This is how this place affects you. I believe that we build men to take on the biggest obstacles and the toughest tasks, which our football team will do this Saturday when we take on our rival. We do come into the game as an underdog. But I invite everybody in here 
to witness some Wabash magic strengthened by months and years of preparation as we win the Monon Bell game and bring the bell home. Ding, ding. <laughs> A few final announcements before we leave. Today is Veterans Day, so we'd want to take a moment to thank all the veterans within the Wabash community and country. Uh, we thank you for your service and dedication to our country. On Friday, the Wabash wrestling team has an inter-squad meet, and the cross-country team will be at the Great Lakes Regional Saturday morning. Lastly, our little giant football team plays host to DePaul in the 127th Monon Bell game. Now please rise and join me in singing Old Wabash. Da 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 da